Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Ashley Mayu taking a look at race number seven at Santa Anita on Saturday. Kickoff leg of a 50 cent pick four. It's the grade two Twilight Derby. We're going a mile and an eighth on the turf. Before we take a look at the field, remember DRF TV viewers, one last chance to get 10% off all DRF past performances. The offer expires October the 26th. Shop now with the QR code on your screen. Use the coupon code DRFTV10. Here's the field. For the grade two twilight derby we have seven three-year-olds again going a mile and an eighth on the turf kind of an interesting field ashley several horses moving dirt to turf we've got the five cattle stepping up in class stay hot though has just been consistent all year long yeah she's certainly i should say he is certainly has been and just missed last time out behind formidable man but kind of looking at that form really has done very little wrong over the santa anita turf course in those last two efforts at del mar off the bit of the fresh name uh, he certainly hasn't lost a step. A lot of horses in this race with good tactical speed. Let's throw up the Timeform U.S. pace projector. This is where Timeform U.S. projects them after the opening half mile. Windstock has shown some speed on dirt. We'll see if Windstock is a better dirt horse than a turf horse. Rothschild showed speed earlier in his career. He's been raiding a bit in his last few starts. Twirling point, another horse that can be close. No real burners in this race, however. This could be a jockey's race. This certainly could be. And even looking at like Caffle, a horse that closed from last, last time out, he has some early foot. We saw that two starts back where he's got that tactical sort of wants to stalk the pace trip. So this could be interesting. I think time form has this right where when you're kind of looking at the opening couple furlongs here of this race, it could be a tightly knit bunch. A horse with a, a lot of upside potential is the lightly race number one, Atitlan, who has placed in both starts against Stakes Company, including the most recent effort. This is the Del Mar Derby. Now, he might have been a little bit unlucky in here. Stay Hot's going to finish second. Atitlan is sort of in behind horses, just crying out for somewhere to run. The hole just doesn't materialize until it's too late. The, horse, the horses get a jump on him. Atitlan is going to get to the outside, and he'll end up running on for third. Yeah, a little bit of tough racing luck, but that's what you get, right? When, you know, the pace setter here, or one of them was kind of forwardly placed in the stretch there and was able to, you know, stay up front. I thought it was a good performance. I think, you know, maybe has had some issues in those last two, one of which is just facing stay hot. He has to do it again. But I'm hoping with the inside draw, he has enough early foot that maybe he's mid-pack here early on and can save ground and hopefully doesn't get into traffic. But I love the way that he handled the mile and an eighth last time out. Maybe Curlin's Chaos will be the one to show some speed. He's stretching out off a seven furlong effort on dirt where he went gate to wire in a sub 45 opening half mile. I don't like that they put him on the shelf after that race. However, he's been listed as a vet scratch twice since then. And his most recent dirt races are good. I wish I liked his recent turf form a little better. Yeah, I didn't love the snow chief from him. Obviously was favored in there coming fresh off a win. Stayed against the Calbreds there, stretched out and just didn't have anything really to offer. Mind you, it was sort of a tightly knit bunch at the end of the race. And this is a horse that finished seventh, but only beaten by length and a half. The figures are a little soft and compared to others in here. And the figure last time, and as you kind of mentioned, a huge effort going seven ace, but now has been on the shelf, returns to the turf. There's just some questions I have here. The barn not necessarily known for taking their dirt runners and putting them back on the turf and having success right away. Um, reservations. I think he is very talented and always been a little bit of a, a big fan of his just based on the way that he's been able to rattle off some victories on the front or close from off of it. I just don't necessarily love this spot for him. The number three is Windstock moving back to turf for trainer Bob Baffert. It's a move I don't necessarily love. Usually Bob's horses just excel on dirt. And once they get on dirt, they stay on dirt. But this horse is relatively unexposed, at least routing on the turf. The only prior turf try came sprinting, going down the hill. And he ran into a pretty good field. The third place finisher came back to place in the ocean side with an 84 buyer. Another horse with tactical speed. Yeah, I'm not really sure what to make out of this move. They brought him back after a little bit of a freshening, went to the shared belief. He didn't fire. He was a huge price in there, but he had to face several of his stable mates, Muth, Imagination. And now you've decided second start off the layoff to go back to turf and his turf race before in the desert code. I know it was on the downhill, very different going six and a half compared to a mile and eighth, but um, not a lot to take away there. So maybe you want to treat this as his first turf effort, just because it's a very different um, sort of race than we saw him last on the turf. But um, this is a move just like you, not one that I'm really a fan of. I think if you like Winstock, though, one thing's for certain, you won't get the typical Bob Baffert odds. He will be a price in here. 
Stay hot to number four might be cycling himself back into shape for his third run off a little bit of a layoff for Peter Erton. We saw him finish second in the race with Atitlan, and he handled the nine furlongs just well, considering there really wasn't a ton of pace for him to rally into. He was last early. They went 115 and change for three quarters, so he ran on well. You know what you're going to get with this horse. It's an honest, consistent trial. Absolutely. Um, Peter Erton's done a really good job managing him as well. We've seen him five times this year, five times last year, and he's just been pretty much the same horse, except his numbers have gotten better. I think, you know, he's a little bit more impressive what we've seen from him so far in 2024 and uh, a really hardy horse in the sense that he can go six and a half, or you mentioned he can get the mile and an eighth distance. He looked very good last time out. He only missed by half a length. I love him third start off the layoff. And, you know, they took that try at Churchill, maybe the shipping and just the, the race took a little bit out of him. They put him on the shelf. And since then, um, he's really hard to ignore his recent form. The trainer, John Sadler, has been very patient with the five cathel. And it looks like this guy is starting to come into his own at just the right time. Let's watch his first level allowance victory last time out. He did get a pretty quick pace to rally into. But here's another situation where he's going to have to squeeze his way through in between horses. And once he does, he sets sail after the winner and he finishes this off very well. Yeah, the way he strides to the wire is pretty impressive because at this point, the five on the inside, uh, Uncle Happy is moving quite well as well, but he's just better and has a really big stride on him. I think stretching out in distance to a mile and eighth should be no issue for him. Um, he was a little bit closer two starts back and, and then tired in the end. I still think he can be a little bit more tactical off of that performance alone. I think maybe he just needs a little bit of a tightener after not being seen for over two months, but has done very little wrong stateside. Another one that's improved. And uh, last time out, I, I think that's a, a reason why they've decided to put him in this spot, right? Get him against stakes competition with a number like that against who he's going to face in here. Um, he is one that I think is a major player. Although the six Rothschild is still eligible for a now winners of two life heat and the lone win came on dirt, all of his turf races are good. His race two starts back in the ocean side I thought was excellent. He could never get cover. Three, four wide throughout, in contention in the stretch and still punched on. And he handled that quirky Kentucky Downs configuration in this race. The Nashville Derby last time out, they stretched him all the way out to ten and a half furlongs. And he stayed on pretty well to finish third behind Carson's run, who came back and won the grade three Jockey Club Derby in New York with a 90 buyer. He's just a very snug fit at this distance in this class level. Yeah. And, you know, his one win, though, was on the dirt. But I love his turf numbers in those last three. And you mentioned he hasn't been able to get another win. But you look at his race at the end of last year, he almost got the job done. And then he had plenty of time off, regrouped, came right back to Del Mar in July. And the pace fell apart there completely. And I think when you look at it, you might say, oh, well, he made the lead and surrendered. I just think the other horses were moving a little bit better in those final stages. And that's why he was defeated and passed. I don't think it was necessarily him tiring that bad. I just think Forbidable Man and Guy Named Joe were just traveling best late. Loved his performance last time out. Now I think he's got a little bit of endurance, um, not just because of the mile and five sixteenths, but we talk about this every single time. Kentucky Downs, it's a grueling turf course. It's not flat. There's hills, there's bumps, there's everything going on. So I think he gained a lot out about that. An 89 buyer, just from a fitness perspective, love him on the cutback. The seven is twirling point. The source is also cross-entered in the Bryan Station Stakes at Keeneland on Saturday. Not sure where he's going to go just yet. I have trouble making out what to do with his last race at Horseshoe Indianapolis. It was just a paceless race. They handed it to the winner at the start, and there was no passing going on. Maybe he was compromised. But then I look at the horses that have come out of that race. Six next out runners. None hit the board. The best buyer of 77. Maybe these were a little bit too tough for him, although his prior turf form was good. Good. It's tough to say. You mentioned they handed it to Lucky Jeremy. If Lucky Jeremy ever gets an easy lead and it's that soft, I mean, he's a sure thing, right? And that's basically what happened. Um, I don't love that performance. I thought the Jersey Derby was a good performance. A well-timed ride from Frankie to Tori got him up in time and kind of looking at that, he was able to get a trip where he was third early, four or five lengths off the pace. The pace was decent enough. It wasn't lightning quick, but it was quick enough for him to make that late move. And off of that performance, I would say the mile and eighth is in his wheelhouse, but he seems to be a little pace dependent. Um, yes, he can win on the front end and he's done that twice, but curious to see what his tactics will be in here. We talked about it. Um, this could be a little bit of a tight knit bunch early and I don't know what the tactics are from that outside post with him. Let's take a look at our top picks for the grade two Twilight Derby. Uh, Stay Hot may be the horse to beat because he just always shows up. But I'm with you, Ashley. I think Rothschild is overdue for a win on the turf. He's run so well without winning in his three grass efforts. 
Absolutely. I think there's a lot to admire about his last out ever at Kentucky Downs. Now he gets back to California. He's never raced, though, over the Santa Anita turf course. That'll be something new for him. But I think the mile and an ace and the trip um, should work out for him in here. Very curious to see, though, how the betting public will support him. I feel like Tim Yachtin's had a really good meet. He has some really nice, you know, younger horses in the barn, two, three, four years old on the grass. And I think people are going to notice him. I think he's going to take some love. I think that a Titlan could run very, very well in here. Stay Hot could run very, very well in here. But I'm with you on Rothschild. Our top pick in race number seven at Santa Anita on Saturday. Kickoff leg, 50 cent late pick four. Good luck. Hey, let me give you a hot tip. If you liked the contents that you've seen before, click on the like and subscribe button right here. And of course, for more DRF videos like Race of the Days, Stakes Previews, click on the videos right here.